Don't expect any miracles Thursday. The Cardinals will lose to the Saints. Good morning, Arizona sports fans. It is now Wednesday, 1030 a.m., and I am here to let you know that tomorrow the Cardinals will take on the Saints who come into town. And, well, I'm scared, folks. If we lose Thursday, it will be one calendar year since the Cardinals have won at home. As a whole, it seems there's a low haze hanging over the organization this week. This team on paper is not bad. There's no reason why they are playing so poorly, yet when asked, no one has the answers to explain why the Cardinals are playing so bad. Let the truth be known now, the Cardinals will lose to the Saints. I can't reiterate that enough. Cliff Kingsbury can't call plays to save his life, and the rift, if you're willing to admit to one, between Kyler and Cliff continues to show through their very paper-thin veil of deception. I don't know if they truly believe their own messages when they spew it to us fans, and I wonder if any of them lose any sleep. Perhaps maybe Kyler doesn't need to lose sleep when he's sleeping on his new bed of $100 bills. My discontent for this football team is at an all-time high. If any of us fans go into Thursday and think we are going to come out winners with Cliff calling plays, then please send me some of that Cardinal Red Kool-Aid because I am famished. In truth, both the Saints rated 18th both offensively and defensively, and the Cardinals rated 20th defensively and 26th offensively do not look good on paper. But the Saints can do something the Cardinals cannot, and that is score in the red zone. This gives the Saints the ultimate edge over the Cardinals despite the two teams being very similar statistically, which is a shame because the Cardinals on paper have the better players, and they have the better team. But they can't execute. They cannot execute and instead of actually figuring out the problem they would rather tell us they are trying to find answers instead of just going back to the drawing board and coming up with something new and trying to implement it. No, they would rather continue to do the same thing over and over again hoping for a different result. That result is not coming. Cliff can't call plays and the Cardinals can't score. He can't blame the kicker when the kicker doesn't get the opportunity to kick. You know, the whole Amendola situation kind of sums up the Cardinals offense as a whole if you think about it. You re-sign him to give him a chance to redeem himself, dangle the carrot with his first attempt, which he made only to not send him out for the next three possessions. You go for it on those fourth downs, missed on all of them, and then with the kicker already mind screwed by the coach, you send him out to kick an extra point and he misses. The Cardinals had two really good drives to start the game. They mixed in Eno Benjamin and Kyler to perfection. Well, almost perfection, they didn't score a touchdown. Instead of sticking to the same game plan, we go completely in some off-the-wall direction, mostly passing, and we don't score the rest of the game. In reality, we really didn't sniff the end zone the rest of the game. How ironic. I really don't want to talk about the injury list, but let's face it, we are a mess. The Saints defense is vulnerable right now, and if Hopkins is ready to go, there's a chance he and Murray take over the game and we finally start scoring some real points. However, Our offensive line is in shambles, and the Saints' front seven will no doubt give us problems. If Hudson doesn't go Thursday, and I expect he won't, let's hope Cliff puts in Billy Price at center. If we run with Sean Harlow, it's going to be a nightmare of an evening for Murray and the tailbacks. 27.9 pass block rating for Harlow just isn't cutting it. He is just bad. Plus, as a center, he's the quarterback of the line, and his audibles, if he was even making the changes, were atrocious. Hey, maybe Cody Ford will be ready to play. Either way, you look at it, the Saints have the edge here. Defensively, the Cardinals will probably hold their own whether they have Dalton or Winston at quarterback. The X Factor will be Taysom Hill. He is a special player, and if we don't slow him down, it's going to be a long night. Notice how I said slow him down. I don't think we can stop him per se. Keep in mind he's a tight end first, even though he's also a utility player. And yes, he does do it all, but I'll say it again, he is a tight end, and the Cardinals historically are horrific defending against tight ends. Sure, he has thrown one touchdown, but he has also been used to run the ball from the Wildcat and it's working. 267 rushing yards and 5 touchdowns will keep a defensive coordinator up at night, and that's not counting the balls he has caught this season. 35 catches for 390 yards and 7 more touchdowns. Yeah, here's to praying Vance Joseph finds a way. And here's to also praying that Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins execute that plan the best they can. Offensively, our X-Factor may very well be Rondell Moore. What I would like to see is Cliff calling more plays for him downfield instead of catching passes behind the line. Run some slant routes for him and Hopkins. Short, quick stuff, especially if they are playing soft. Moore can be electric when the ball is in his hands, but he needs to be put into a position to succeed. Behind the line isn't going to do it. No more trick plays. No more side to side. No more east and west. 
Let's get down the field. Another person I'd like to see is Greg Dortch. They just aren't using him anymore. He was so good to start the season. I almost wonder if something happened behind closed doors and Dortch is maybe in the doghouse. I certainly hope not. Statistically, he has been crazy good. I'd love to see both Moore and Dorch out there together. More weapons for defenses to have to worry about. What's more concerning, especially as of late, is how Moore has been in his own head lately and has been dropping passes. If Moore continues to struggle, maybe that will open the door for Dorch. But again, I'd rather see the two playing together. I believe that gives us the best chance to win. Let's get back to talking about Cliff for a moment. Don't expect him to relinquish the play calling duties this Thursday despite him saying he would consider it. It's just too soon. If the Cardinals can miraculously find a way to win against the Saints, or at least make it close to going into their mini bye week, I could see Cliff putting that talk on the back burner. On second thought, perhaps it'll be better if they just lose bad. Either he'll have to implement an offensive coordinator, or he loses his job altogether. But if we're being realistic, there's actually a renaissance in this league at the moment. In general, the offenses in this league are struggling to pass the ball. A lot of teams are using the soft cover 2 shell to dictate what the offense can do. That's good for the defenses, sure, but for the offenses not willing to change their schemes or game plans, it's proven to be tough. If that's going to continue to be the case, the best way to beat the defense is to run the ball. If the Cardinals continue to abandon the run, they will continue to struggle, especially in the red zone. Run the ball, set up the play action, and then go deep. It can be done, easily, if you just follow the game plan. One that's not done by Cliff, because he doesn't really have a game plan. I think he just strings a bunch of plays together and tries to be fancy, and it's not working. Will the Cardinals win against the Saints? And I set up a poll in my community and the majority of you stated no, they will not. And honestly, if the offense can't get going and the defense, who have gotten better all year, end up having a letdown, then yeah, you're right. They don't. But if the defense can keep them in it, they have a chance. If Hopkins, Moore, Murray, Dorch, Benjamin, and Anderson all find a way at home? So do I think the Cardinals will win against the Saints? No. I don't think they will. All right, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you click that bell to get notifications for my next video. I will see you all next time.